Hey guys, Josh here with Crypto Y'all, and the video you're about to watch is a private training uh, that I revealed to my mastermind members, and I'm making it available to a select few right now, and it's called the Crypto ATM Strategy. Uh, imagine having virtual ATMs or rental properties that pay you daily, and it's all about your portfolio having its own cash flow uh, system inside of it, much like a business, treating our crypto portfolio like a business instead of a slot machine. And so I lay it all out. I show you what I do, how I do it, uh, and I hope you enjoy this. And I wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, at the end of this video, for those who make it all the way through the very short time period, I have a special invitation, a nice little opportunity that I think you'll be interested in, especially if you want more cash flow. Stay tuned. What I call the crypto ATM strategy. And I wanna go through it just really quick. This is really just kind of like a business plan or a way to think about um, specific passive income projects that you're invested in, DeFi, uh, what, whatever it is that's popular in our community that you're a part of or whatever. Just having so, a few best practices in mind and how to uh, think about your uh, your cash flow, the cash flow part of your flywheel. Okay. Um, now, as you recall, I want to tie this in though, because like the central nervous system, again, if you're new or if you've been here a while and you just haven't paid attention, you know, a lot of us haven't gone through the training still. Um, no judgment, but it's going to be helpful for you to upgrade your brain. But remember, the central nervous system, the spinal cord of what we do here in the crypto y'all ecosystem. Uh, is the, the crypto flywheel strategy. These are three wealth building strategies built into one framework to help you grow your net worth in crypto. Despite there being a bear market or a bull market, you're going to use this flywheel differently in bull markets than you are in bear markets. Right now, um, you need to know like if we're in a bear market or a bull market because uh, in bull markets, you're going to be able to really take advantage of the cash flow a lot more lucratively and freely and creatively in bear markets there these are less um less advantageous still there but what you really want to take advantage of in the bear market is the building equity part i can buy you know if if i can buy something like matic or chainlink or bitcoin or ethereum at a discount price i need to really be dedicating my capital my dollar cost averaging here uh, rather than here okay now the crypto atm strategy though is your approach or a an approach that you can use uh, in a bull or a bear market to um, accumulate that internal cash flow that house money that we want to use as dollar cost averaging funds into the things that we believe in, the things that we have conviction about. Okay. Those are the primary differentials here. When it comes to leverage, we stay away from it in bear markets. We don't, it's less needed because of the bargain prices. And um, you don't want to risk um, liquidations and margin calls. So what we do is we use these in bull markets. This is just something that really helps us kick the market while it's down and take advantage of more cash flowing income streams. But everything's on discount. You don't need leverage as much as you do cash flow and appreciation. All right. So uh, here's here's just kind of like, again, an illustration of what I'm talking about. Um, and basically, you're, you want to just collect little ATMs different DeFi investments. That, again, generically speaking, this this could be uh, one one project, you know, let's say like Giddy and it's paying out 0.4, 0 0.5% a day. And this one might be Alpha Capital and it's paying out an average of 1.17 a day. And this could be uh, Prosperity Gym uh, Ventures or whatever uh, it's called. It's paying out 2% a day. And, and the list goes on. You're, But you want to, you want to, create ATMs. You know, for those of you who have tried ATM businesses or have owned ATM businesses, we've got a couple people in our group, I think, that have done this. But like, you know, ATMs by the, like it, it, owning one ATM is not as lucrative as owning five. Owning one rental property is not as lucrative as owning five, 10, 15, 20. So the, the idea here is to stack 
your ATMs, your 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 DeFi crypto ATMs that pay you a residual uh, payout, okay, consistently, daily, etc. Now, the way you allocate capital to these ATMs is important as well. Um, so, moving along through here, I'm just going to talk about five best practices, okay, very quickly. Um, number one, use a micro capital approach. Now, what does micro capital mean? It's subjective to you, where you are in your financial journey. You know, my, a micro capital might mean uh, $100 for some people. Uh, it might mean $10,000 to other people. So I've got to toe the line here and say, this is not financial advice, but it is just subjective to your uh, your approach and your total available capital that you can invest without worrying about it or, you know, not being, you know, you, you don't want to use money that you have to use to pay for groceries and power bills. But the idea here is to create snowball effects inside of each of your ATMs and allow your capital to snowball itself rapidly, kind of get in, get out, and then move around the flywheel. OK, so micro capital is a great just mentality, um, especially when you're just first starting out or you're getting into a new investment. Maybe it's uncharted territory for you or other people. Micro capital. Um, I would say this is a like you, you obviously want to test. Remember, I always say go in ankle deep into the water. That's one thing. Then what I'm really talking about with micro capital is like, what is your position? Like, you know, if you if you put in 10 or $20 for a test, then is 100 or 200, like, is it a 1000? Like, where are you going to settle in and go, you know, this is my seed capital for this project, I have this earmarked, I'm putting it in. And this is what's going to earn in ATM number one. That's what I'm talking about with micro capital. Uh, best practice number two, uh, get in early if you can. Get in early if you can. Now in a bear market, that's that rings more true than in a bull market. Okay. Again, remember total value locked, total value locked, TVL, most important metric in all of DeFi. Um, it shows you the amount of liquidity or treasury that is in the protocol. And the higher that number, the healthier it is. But um, in relation to the tokenomics, the leadership, the communication skills, the public relations. There's all kinds of factors that go into effect. And if you haven't watched the session in Get Paid Daily on how to qualify, choose, and select investments, that's where you want to kind of pause, go watch that, make sure you know how to assess, judge, and analyze protocols so that you can have your own risk spectrum. But getting in early at minimum allows you to take advantage of the early liquidity so that you don't get caught holding the bag if something goes awry in the protocol or in the in the investment roadmap, okay? There's always going to be pivots. There's always going to be changes. There's always going to be volatility. Um, if you don't like volatility, then you need to go buy a block of gold <laughs> and, and mail it in, right? But if you, if you pay attention, you know, and you have an ATM strategy, like maybe you don't need to have five ATMs. Maybe you just need to have two or three at first. Um, and use micro capital. Again, that's what helps you not be stressed out. Uh, number three, uh, use diversification for security. Now, a lot of you know traditional advisors would tell you to diversify, 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 so much so that ETFs and index funds came into fashion so that you could just buy the entire S&P 500 or whatever in one fail sleuth. But um, for me, I actually don't enjoy diversification because you end up watering down potential results in, in a lot of cases. And so, but in DeFi and in crypto specifically, one of the traits about crypto that's not true in the fiat dollar world is that transactions are immutable, which means they can't be clawed back. You can't dispute a crypto charge like you can on a credit card. And so there, that's a security thing, especially when you enter into a uh, custodial arrangement, you connect your wallet to a DAP and that DAP is managing, you know, earning money with your liquidity. You want to be able uh, to diversify in case there are rug pulls, in case there are bad performance issues, whatever that is, 
you want to have you want to have three to five, you want to have five to 10. It, 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 as soon as you can get your skills and your self-reliance and your self-confidence up to speed and you feel good about it, having that diversity is a security measure more so than it is a performance measure. Because I mean, in DeFi, you can get really aggressive annual percentage yields. Like you can methodically double and triple your money pretty quickly. Uh, so it's usually not a performance issue on why you want to diversify. It's a security safety um, and protect your capital practice. Number four, emotional attachment is bad. Uh, if you become emotionally attached with the performance of a crypto, if you find yourself um, uh, of a crypto farm or a DeFi project or a trading algorithmic trading bot or even a human trading desk that you're just in love with, it might be time to do a check to look in the mirror and go, hey, is this where I need to be any longer? Is it time to take profits? Is it time to move my capital out? And that's that's the number one reason why people hold on to crypto, whether it's DeFi or you're in the appreciation zone or, or whatever, uh, having an emotional attachment to these projects is bad. It's also bad psychologically because you start vesting too much into it. You start believing into it in, in these uh, in, in these projects too much. And it, it becomes depressive if they have a bad performance uh, or if they don't pass an audit or they do something stupid publicly. Like um, there's, I can name so many crypto protocols and we make jokes about it, you know, in the discord group about if they were just better communicators, if they were be if they had more soft skills as leaders uh, running a company, then there wouldn't be so much heartache. Well, that's because, um, you know, there's nobody perfect, obviously, and attaching yourself emotionally to a crypto project with fallible leadership is just a bad idea. And then last best, best practice here, think in 30 to 90 day sprints, okay? I think in these kind of blocks, I think micro capital, I think what's my return, I think what's my ROI, um, and when can I get my capital out? Um, prioritizing ROI. So, Put a thousand dollars in. If I'm making, if I'm making money and I'm, I'm, I'm making returns, I'm gonna get my thousand dollars out as soon as I can, and then I've got house money that I'm, I'm earning on. So then you're earning yield on yield. That takes some patience. It takes a little bit of greed suppression, okay. Uh, but with an ATM strategy, it allows you, much like with rental properties, it allows you to. Uh, roll up your your rewards faster. And if depending on the annual percentage yields, you may have some of the ATMs that are doing a, a heavier lift than others. And you might actually be able to get your ROI out of one ATM because of the performance of another ATM, much like when you have rental properties and you pay one of them off with all five of your rental property proceeds, you pay one off. It's just like pointing all the cannons at one rental property, one ATM at a time until they're all paid off. That's the way you can kind of look at this is just you've got multiple rental properties, multiple ATMs. They have an overhead cost of your original capital. Get your original capital back. Use the other ATMs to pay yourself back faster and then multiply. And then take your house money and start buying into the things that really have the generational wealth um, lifespan things that we talk about a lot of in the crypto y'all advisor group uh, channel and some of those long-term uh, strong conviction holds. So that's how to use the ATM strategy in relation to your crypto flywheel. Okay. So that was the crypto ATM strategy. Hope it got you fired up. I hope you're excited about crypto investing and how you can create your own house money to dollar cost average into greater things. And here's the thing though, here's the linchpin to the whole strategy. You got to know where to invest, right? What's safe? What's not safe? How do we do it securely? Uh, what's the alpha? What's the market intelligence that you need to know in order to make these micro capital investments snowball quickly into cash flow? That's what we do in my mastermind. We're a community of investors, hundreds of us who are who have skin in the game, and we're always out there in uh, the market with our eyes peeled for the next greatest, most profitable crypto investment. Um, I also provide training, support, uh, weekly coaching, the whole nine yards. It's a very robust, awesome family of crypto investors. 
uh, high quality too, uh, if I don't say so myself. And I'd love to invite you. As a matter of fact, I do batches of 10 people at a time who can enter the mastermind. And uh, if you're watching this video right now, it's highly likely that we have some applications or some seats at the table available. And so I'd like to encourage you to apply uh, by going to the button uh, or link below this video, uh, either in the description or uh, wherever you might be, or you can go simply go to cryptoyall.co slash crypto farming, all one word, cryptoyall.co slash crypto farming, or just click the button or the link that I've put, in, I've put conveniently around this video. And I hope to talk to you personally on a call, because what happens is you'll fill out a short survey, a short form, and then it'll redirect you to my, uh, my personal calendar, my scheduler. And then uh, you'll pick a time that's convenient for you in the next couple of days. If you're ready to rock and roll, I'll walk you through the whole program and we'll see if it's a good fit. All right, hope to see you on the other side in my mastermind called Get Paid Daily.